So now let's look at the next movement in the eight pieces of brocade set of Qigong exercises. And this movement is commonly referred to as separate heaven and earth. And you can see from the movement, you're pressing up with one arm and pressing down with the other. And some details we'll go through here. The forearms of both arms are pronated. The wrists and fingers are extended all the way to the maximum and then we have the elbow fully extended on both arms now one is pressing down and the other one is pressing up the arm pressing up is uh, externally rotated in the shoulder and the arm pressing down is either neutral or some variations internally rotate the shoulder so that the fingers are now pointing towards the body instead of straight ahead. The analysis I'll do here is going to involve the variation with the fingers pointing straight ahead. And I'll go into the differences that would occur if you t internally rotate the shoulder and point the fingers back towards the body. Now we can see this movement doesn't involve the legs or the head and neck much or the waist. These maintain relatively static throughout the movement. Now, as I described earlier, the upper arm, basically from the shoulder onward, uh, is basically similar on both sides. So we have finger extension, wrist extension, and those are all activating the muscles in the posterior part of the forearm, and therefore a reciprocating stretch in the anterior part of the forearm. Elbow is fully extended, so that is activation of the triceps in both arms and a reciprocating stretch or relaxation in the bicep on both arms. Now as we get into the shoulder, here's where the difference happens. The arm pushing up is externally rotated which is activation in the posterior deltoids and also lifting the arm up and overhead is activation in that anterior deltoid as well. This one's a little bit interesting because the posterior deltoids are probably stretched and active. I've shown them in the diagram as simply stretched because they extend the shoulder and the anterior deltoid flexes the shoulder. So being that the arm is in a fully flexed position overhead, the anterior deltoid is definitely active and probably active more strongly than the posterior deltoid. And the posterior deltoid acts as a supplementary muscle to external rotation in addition to the muscles in the rotator cuff. In contrast, the arm pressing down has a more activation has more activation in the posterior deltoids and the anterior deltoid is relaxed or stretched because the arm is not in a flex position. However, the arm could be internally rotated in which the anterior deltoid would activate some even though it's in this lowered non-flex position. In addition to activation of muscles in the uh, the pectoralis major and probably also the pectoralis minor to some extent as the scapula is rotated inwards which involves activation of the pectoralis minor. The pectoralis major and minor muscles will be stretched in the arm pushing up. Now looking at the back, we get a better view of the posterior deltoids and muscles involved in the back of the body. So when pushing up, the scapula has to rotate outwards, and that is involves a activation of the lower traps, upper traps, and then a stretch of the rhomboids, and we'll see since the arm is lifted overhead, the lats on that side are now stretched as well. The arm pushing down is once again the opposite. Now the upper and lower traps are relaxed or stretched and now we have activation of the rhomboids 
to pull the scapula inward and now the lats are somewhat active or at least in a shorter position than when lifted overhead as the lats bring the, the humerus in and down. So this exercise is repeated uh, for a number of repetitions, pressing up and then switching hands and pressing up with the other side and down with the other, alternating back and forth. And what we this exercise accomplishes when we look at the muscle activation and areas of stretch, we see a stretch on one side of the pec, lats, uh, and other muscles, then alternating back to the other side to stretch the other side. And at the same time, we're getting contraction of those same muscles on the arm pressing down. So we're stretching one side while shortening the other side and then alternating to stretch the contralateral side and shorten the same side again. Now looking at the myofascial meridians, we see the superficial and deep front arm front arm lines and superficial and deep back arm lines. What's noticeably missing from these myofascial meridians for the uh, front and back arm lines is the contribution of the latissimus dorsi or the lats, which connect from the spine and then connect all the way to the humerus or the upper arm bone to draw the arms down and back. This muscle is noticeably stretched in this exercise when the arm is lifted and pressed up overhead. And then as I always like to mention, I'm not a doctor, professional physiologist, or in the medical field at all. I'm not even a medical student. I had some questions or curiosity about what these different Chinese martial arts related and Qigong related exercises do in the, from a physiology standpoint and I had never seen it addressed by anyone so I decided to study it myself. Here's my references that I use uh, most often and if you're interested in learning more I suggest you check out a few of these references especially the one on fascia. If you like this video please hit the like button. If you're on YouTube subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when my next upload is. If you're on Instagram please follow me at the.kungfu.intellect and on YouTube is the Kung Fu Intellect. I'm going to do one more video on the next movement for the eight pieces of Brocade Qigong set. And I'm going to take a little break to do something else and then return back to do the last four pieces of the set. So stay tuned.